seeking permission. Rondu stood nervously in the living room of his home, shifting his weight from one foot to the other. His mother, Durika, was busy in the kitchen preparing breakfast. The smell of freshly baked bread filled the air, mingling with the aroma of coffee. Mom, Rondu began hesitantly, can I go downtown with Kus today? Durika paused, turning to face her son. Her expression was one of concern, mixed with a hint of reluctance. Downtown, you say? It's not safe out there, Rondu. You know how chaotic and dangerous it can be. Rondu nodded, understanding his mother's worries. I know, Mom, but Kus and I want to explore the city, see new things. We'll be careful, I promise. Durika sighed, wiping her hands on a towel. It's not just about being careful, Rondu. The world is full of gangs, and I don't want you making enemies and endangering yourself or our family. Rondu's heart sank, but he was determined. I'll avoid trouble, Mom. I just want to see the city, please? After a long moment of silence, Dorika relented. All right, but you must promise me that you'll stay safe and avoid any confrontations. Rondu's face lit up with a smile. I promise, Mom. Dorika walked over to a small cabinet and pulled out a small, intricately designed gun. She handed it to Rondu, who stared at it in surprise. Take this gun to protect yourself. Remember to only use this gun in cases of extreme danger or if your life is threatened. Rondu took the gun hesitantly, feeling its weight in his hand. Mom, I don't know how to use this. Durika placed a comforting hand on his shoulder. Our species usually does not like to use guns unless it's for war. This gun was created by the most famous blacksmith, Ren. I didn't buy it directly from him. I got it from one of my customers and used it for protection. This gun has three bullets forged from Zeep steel, using springs to create thrust for the bullets. Although not as strong as gunpowder bullets, they can cause damage when fired at close range. The best thing about this gun is that you can reuse these bullets. Rondu listened intently, absorbing every word. Only use this gun in cases of extreme danger or if your life is threatened, Durika continued, her eyes locking onto his with unwavering seriousness. This world is full of gangs, Rondu. Don't make enemies with them and endanger yourself and your family. With a deep breath, Rondu pocketed the gun. I understand, Mom. I promise to be careful. Durika embraced her son tightly, a silent prayer escaping her lips. Take care, my son, and remember, I'm always with you in spirit. A new world Rondu couldn't contain his excitement as he set off to meet his friend Kus. This was his first time venturing into the bustling streets of the city, and every step felt like an adventure. The towering buildings, busy shopping areas, and bustling amusement parks were a far cry from the serene countryside he was used to. Kus, a lively and adventurous soul, greeted Rondu with a broad smile. Ready to explore, buddy? He asked, his eyes twinkling with excitement. Absolutely, Rondu replied, matching his friend's enthusiasm. The two of them set off, weaving through the crowded streets and taking in the sights and sounds of the city. They marveled at the skyscrapers that seemed to touch the sky, the neon lights that lit up the streets even in broad daylight, and the myriad of people from different walks of life. After wandering around for a while, they decided to stop by a restaurant. The place was bustling with activity, a testament to its popularity and the delicious food it served. They chose a corner table with a good view of the outside, eager to continue their adventure over a hearty meal. The encounter. As they settled into their seats, the sudden roar of motorbikes shattered the restaurant's lively atmosphere. Rondu and Kus turned their heads to see a group of six hyenas riding large motorbikes, armed with guns. The sight of them sent a wave of fear through the restaurant. The people quickly began to pay their bills and leave, not wanting any trouble. The hyenas strutted in arrogantly, heading straight for a table with the best view. Unfortunately, the table was already occupied. One of the hyenas, a burly figure with a scar running down his face, screamed, Get out! The four occupants, terror-stricken, hurriedly paid their bill and fled. The waiter, visibly shaking, approached the table to clear the leftovers. The lead hyena sneered, Is there anything delicious here? Yes. The waiter stammered, his hands trembling. There are many delicious dishes here. What would you like to choose? The hyena's eyes glinted with menace. Bring all the delicious food here for us. The waiter hesitated, his fear evident. Yes, but there are too many dishes, and I'm afraid there won't be enough space on the table. The hyena's eyes widened in anger. 
I told you to bring it out, just bring it out, do you want to die? He pulled out a gun and pointed it straight at the waiter's head. The waiter fell to his knees, his face pale. Please spare my life, I didn't do anything, I'm just a waiter here. One of the other hyenas, seemingly the voice of reason in the group, intervened. Let him go. The hyena reluctantly put away his gun, and the waiter, still shaking, hurried off to fulfill their order. From their corner, Rondu and Kuss watched the scene unfold, their hearts pounding. Rondu felt a surge of anger and frustration at the hyena's behavior, but he remembered his mother's warning and stayed silent, unseen and unheard. As the hyenas settled into their seats, the restaurant's atmosphere remained tense. The other patrons avoided eye contact, their fear palpable. Rondu and Kuss exchanged uneasy glances, trying to decide what to do next. We should leave, Kuss whispered, his voice barely audible. It's not safe here. Rondu nodded, but his eyes lingered on the hyenas. Yeah, but I want to see what they're up to first. Maybe we can learn something useful. Kuss raised an eyebrow. Are you sure? This seems dangerous. Just a little longer, Rondu insisted. If things get worse, we'll leave immediately. Reluctantly, Kuss agreed, and they continued to observe the hyenas from their corner. The gang's leader, the burly one with the scar, barked orders at the waiter, demanding more food and drinks. The other hyenas laughed and joked, their voices loud and boisterous. Amidst the chaos, Rondu's mind raced. He thought about the gun his mother had given him, its weight heavy in his pocket. He knew he had to be careful, but he also couldn't stand by and do nothing while these bullies terrorized innocent people. A tense moment. The restaurant's lively atmosphere had gradually returned after the initial shock of the hyena's entrance. Rondu and Koos sat in their corner, trying to enjoy their meal, despite the oppressive presence of the gang. As they ate, Rondu's gaze unintentionally collided with that of one of the hyenas, a menacing individual with piercing eyes. For a brief moment, time seemed to stand still as their eyes locked. Rondu's gaze remained unwavering, a defiant look that he couldn't suppress despite his best efforts. The hyena, misinterpreting Rondu's steady gaze as a challenge, stood up abruptly and stalked over to their table. What the hell are you looking at? He snarled, his voice dripping with hostility. Rondu, remembering his mother's warning, tried to defuse the situation. I don't want to get into trouble with you, he said softly, his voice calm and measured. The hyena glared at him for a moment longer, then smirked. You're lucky today. I'm having fun, so I won't kill you. With that, he turned and walked back to his group, leaving Rondu and Cuss in a state of uneasy relief. Cuss turned to Rondu, his face pale with fear. Don't be like that, Rondu. You know exactly who they are. They are bloodthirsty hyenas and kill without hesitation. You put me and yourself in danger. Rondu said nothing. The hyenas return. A moment later, the same hyena glanced back in Rondu's direction and met his eyes once again. This time, the hyena's face twisted with rage. He stormed over to Rondu, his fists clenched. Do you have a problem? He growled. Why do you look at me with those eyes? I'm extremely uncomfortable. Rondu, unable to hold back any longer, responded with a steady voice. Who are you? The hyena leaned in close, sniffing the air around Rondu. You smell like a gorilla, I will never forget you for decades. It is the identity and heritage of our species. He sneered and continued. I never hide my identity when I kill people. I am Ruse, only son of Boozy and great-grandson of Juice. Boozy is the leader of the cunning hyena gang. You're probably still young and don't know about Juss, right? Rondu remained calm, his expression unchanging. I don't care who Juss is. Bruce tried to suppress his anger, but his voice shook with barely contained fury. Okay, let me tell you who Juss is before you die. Juss was a notorious terrorist during the Kodo period. Juss built an assassin network across the continent. Juss succeeded in organizing the assassination of President Nazu. I'm extremely proud to have Juss's blood. Rondu replied with cold disdain, just a murderer, nothing more, nothing less. Ruza's face contorted with rage. He immediately pulled out his gun and aimed it at Rondu, his finger hovering over the trigger. In a swift motion, Rondu knocked the gun from Ruza's hand and delivered a powerful lower hand fist to his chest. Ruza stumbled back, narrowly avoiding the full force of Rondu's strike. 
the snake fist regaining his balance, Roos adopted a strange sinuous stance, resembling a snake. This is snake fist, he announced, his voice dripping with menace, created by Hawa, a male hyena. Accompanying this martial art are extremely poisonous snakes. Before Rondu could react, Ruse released a snake from his sleeve. The serpent hissed and lunged at Rondu, venom dripping from its fangs. Rondu dodged to the side but the snake's venom hit the person behind him. The unfortunate victim screamed in pain as the venom burned through their skin. The snake then bit the person's face, and within minutes, they lay lifeless on the floor. The restaurant erupted into chaos. People screamed and scrambled for safety, desperately trying to escape the hyena's wrath. The air was thick with fear and confusion as the deadly confrontation unfolded. The Legacy of Snake Fist Let's delve into the origins of Snake Fist. Snake Fist was created by Hawa after years of observing the agility and flexibility of snakes. Combining modern martial arts with snake-like postures, Hawa developed a fighting style that emphasized speed, precision, and unpredictability. His descendants continued to refine and improve upon Snake Fist, passing down the techniques through generations. Hyenas, with their natural affinity for deception and cunning, found Snake Fist to be a perfect match for their own instincts. They also possessed a unique talent, the ability to hypnotize and control poisonous snakes. By feeding these snakes highly toxic substances, they enhanced the potency of the snake's venom. Over time, the snakes adapted to the toxins, producing venom ten times more deadly than normal. These snakes became living weapons, hidden in the sleeves of the hyenas and ready to strike at a moment's notice. When the venom entered the bloodstream of their victims, death came swiftly, often within minutes. The fight intensifies. Ruse, his eyes gleaming with sadistic pleasure, watched the chaos unfold. Do you see now, gorilla? He taunted. This is the power of Snake Fist and the deadly venom of our snakes. Rondu's mind raced as he tried to formulate a plan. He couldn't let Ruse continue his reign of terror. But he also had to be careful not to endanger the innocent bystanders any further. Drawing on his training and instincts, Rondu prepared himself for the fight of his life. Ruse lunged at Rondu, his movements fluid and snake-like. Rondu countered with a series of swift punches and kicks, each strike aimed at disabling Roos without causing lethal harm. The two combatants moved with incredible speed and precision, their bodies a blur of motion. Roos's snake struck again, but this time Rondu was ready. He dodged the venomous fangs and grabbed the snake by the neck, twisting it in a way that immobilized the creature. With a swift motion, he threw the snake to the ground and stomped on its head, killing it instantly. Roos let out a furious roar and charged at Rondu with renewed ferocity. Their fight was a deadly dance, each move countered by the other, neither gaining a clear advantage. The restaurant's patrons watched in stunned silence, their fear mingled with awe at the display of skill and bravery. An Unseen Observer Amidst the chaos and confusion of the restaurant, as Ruz and Rondu clashed with lethal intensity, a figure watched silently from the shadows. Positioned discreetly in a corner, his presence went unnoticed by the frantic patrons and the battling adversaries. Clad in a long, dark cloak that blended seamlessly with the dim lighting, he observed the fight with keen interest. This secret guest, a man of significant influence and mystery, leaned closer to his companion, a slender, sharp-eyed individual dressed in nondescript clothing. I want to know everything about that young man, he whispered, his voice barely audible above the commotion. His eyes, sharp and calculating, remained fixed on Rondu. The companion nodded attentively, his expression one of absolute focus and readiness. Yes, I understand everything you said, I'll do it now, he replied respectfully. The command. The secret guest's eyes narrowed as he continued to watch Rondu. He saw potential in the young man, a raw talent that needed to be understood and perhaps harnessed. Follow him, the guest instructed, his voice low and commanding. Find out who he is, where he lives, and whose son he is. Remember, I want to know everything. Do you understand what I say? The companion's gaze was steady and unwavering. Yes, I understand. I'll gather all the information and report back to you. With a subtle nod, the secret guest signaled his approval. He knew his companion was capable and thorough, qualities essential for the task at hand. 
The cloak of mystery surrounding Rondu intrigued him, and he needed to peel back the layers to understand the young man's background, motivations, and capabilities.